it's just been a shocking period. Um, just lost so much great talent in such a short time. Yeah, they're calling it the curse of 2016. It actually started in 2015 you know, with Lemmy. You know, I, I think by the time um, it happened uh, with Glenn Fry, it just made sense. You know, every, each one hit really hard. Uh, some were totally unexpected. Yeah, Bowie was, was completely unexpected. Nobody saw that coming. The seeds of the idea, I think, may have happened the night we played San Francisco and we completed our short uh, West Coast tour. Uh, so we found out about uh, David Bowie uh, during the show. It was actually, we were taking a quick break before coming out for an encore and word spread about it. And uh, uh, Mark Osagueda actually announced it to the crowd. You know, very heartfelt. He's a big Bowie fan, as we all are. But I think him especially. It's kind of sad that we have to do this music under these circumstances with this loss. But um, creatively, uh, it was very, it was kind of uh, cathartic to, to do it. And uh, I think we're all really proud of the result. Yeah, choosing the songs, uh, well, it was uh, easier in some cases than others. Okay, so for. Um, yeah, Motorhead. There was there was one song we were not going to do, <laughs> and it's it's not. <laughs> we love we all love the song. You know what song we're talking about. I don't even have to say it. Okay, so that was off the table. By the time we were doing our tour dates in January, um, you know, we were we'd worked in a, a, a segment of and a sort of a small block of songs to pay tribute to him. And uh, we were actually invited to uh, participate in um, on the day of his memorial. And our show in LA became part of the official service, which, yeah, which was a huge honor. So we were playing other songs like um, Killed by Death, uh, Chase is Better Than the Catch. Um, but I, I don't know, Iron Fist just felt very natural. You know, it has to do with singers too. You know, the singers have to be uh, comfortable with the songs. So I think, you know, in the case of Troy, you know, he's a big fan of that song in particular, and we and we all love playing it. So that was a no-brainer. Yeah, you know, with Bowie, uh, there's, you know, there are certain songs that are tougher than others, especially if you know we do, we do, um, you know, heavier music. So it would be really hard to do a song like, say, Changes, right, or China Girl, unless unless you did it uh, humorously, which I don't I don't think would work. Suffragette City has this great, um, well, it has many great parts to it, but it's just it's it's a really rocking song. And again, Mark is our uh, yeah bow big our biggest Bowie enthusiast, and I think he was feeling that song as well. Now, as far as the, the Eagles, um, well, that also puts us in, in the category of, um, yeah, a lot of songs to choose from, but not many that um, would work for a heavy rock or metal situation. There's, there's, there's plenty of songs I can't imagine doing. Um, but yeah, Life in the Fast Lane is just a very rocking tune in its own way. Yeah, we we didn't know what what to do with the song. It was just like we you know we knew we had to do a song. Uh, we knew that was the song, but how to approach it, uh, especially how to approach it vocally, was was uh, a challenge. But um, I'm amazed how it turned out. When she sent that final version, um, yeah, I think she she had a few tries in the studio already, and then once she found it, it was like unstoppable. So I think that that was a real that that one in particular just came out completely different than I think any any of us could have expected in a good in the best possible way. It's very cool that we got to do a whole song where she really demonstrates these uh, vocal chops that you know it's it's different than how a lot of people uh, know her.